Good afternoon, St. Paul's, and welcome to our 140th anniversary celebration of music. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the special concert in observation of our 140th year of life together here at St. Paul's. Music has always been an integral part of our faith life here at St. Paul's and in the church. When you sing, you pray twice. And we have had such an incredible breadth and depth of talent here at St. Paul's. And today will be no exception. Just I'm grateful for everyone who has contributed to today's efforts and to our music here at St. Paul's. And I'd like to offer this prayer for church musicians and artists from the Book of Common Prayer. O God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth, and grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty, and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Iona G. Marvin. As a little girl who loved to sing, I met Mrs. Iona G. Marvin at the age of six years old. I was somewhat of a shy girl with whom I really wanted Mrs. Marvin to notice me. At the urging of my mother, my aunts, and my uncles, 
I was told to listen to Mrs. Marvin's directions. Our church was blessed with Mrs. Marvin as our organist. She was a dedicated musician who always wanted her youth choir and senior choir to do their best. Mrs. Marvin graced out choirs with her love of music and she challenged our voices to be heard each Sunday morning. Mrs. Marvin set the pace for those of us who chose to enter music, either as a career or just for pleasure.
Dr. Calvin B. Grimes. Ain't God good? Never in a thousand years would I have imagined myself living in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. We moved to Atlanta from Florida in October 1968. How timely. We became members of St. Paul's in January 1969. We transferred our membership from the Episcopal Church of the Ascension in Clearwater, Florida, where we had integrated the church and had sung in its choir. I am a cradle Episcopalian from Jacksonville, Florida, and my husband, Gene, always referred to himself as a foot-stomping Baptist from Leesburg, Florida. No stranger to the Episcopal music, I grew up loving and knowing the hymns, chants, service, service music, and all the smells and bells of the Episcopal choir and church. I knew several settings of the service because I have been in an Episcopal church ever since I was a toddler. My mom was the organist choir master of our church, St. Philip's, for over 40 years. Jean and I met at Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida. As a student at FAMU, I attended and sang in the choir at St. Michael's and All Angels Episcopal Church. Jean became a member too. We both sang in the choir. The very first Sunday that I attended St. Paul's here on Peyton Road, I immediately went up after service and introduced myself to Mrs. Marvin and told her that I would love to join the choir. How fortunate we were to have joined St. Paul's at that time. We were blessed to have been able to experience Mrs. Marvin. Mrs. Marvin was obviously in the throes of reorganizing the choir for St. Paul's soon after she retired. Before leaving, the very same Sunday that I joined, several of the members of the junior choir were elevated to the senior choir. Kathleen and I joined the present senior choir at the same time. Small, we had an excellent sound and were dedicated, hardworking musicians. We sang every Sunday and practiced diligently every week. Following Mrs. Marvin, we continued with the same quality of music. Mr. William Canaan, brother of parishioner Jacqueline Canaan Hall, became our organist choir director. Canaan was with us for only a very short time, but long enough to teach us the beautiful anthem, Glorious Everlasting. After Canaan, Floyd Ruffin became our organist choir master. Ruffin was well known in the AU Center. He was one of the instructors in the music department of Morris Brown College. A graduate of Morehouse, he played the piano and organ beautifully. It was Ruffin who encouraged several of us to join the Atlanta University Community Chorus. In the AU Community Chorus, most of the black musicians in Atlanta were members. The renowned Dr. Wendell Whalum was the director. This is where I first met Calvin. We were quite surprised and happy when Dr. Grimes became our organist choir master. We found Dr. Grimes to be a loyal and dedicated leader of the music of St. Paul's. We were blessed to have a musician of his stature and caliber to be as patient, professional, and prepared for the position. We, the members of the choir, learned so much under Dr. Grimes' leadership. He did not treat us as just a group of volunteer singers. Under his leadership, we could stand before and participate, participate among the best of the best. A studious person and an academician, Dr. Grimes knew the Episcopal Church. Being the scholar and perfectionist throughout his life, he had studied. We knew that we had been fully prepared for whatever the occasion. Dr. Grimes was a highly organized and disciplined person. Just as he sought excellence from his students, he expected our best from us. Calvin was always prepared, on time, and ready to work. He would begin rehearsals with the hymns. No surprises for us on Sunday morning. After the hymns were sufficiently sung, Calvin would bring out the anthem we were to sing or whatever anthem we were working on. 
I loved how evident it was that he had studied the piece. He would have the choir to turn to whatever section. After we had mastered the particular section, he would smile and say, hmm, well, now you know the piece, for that was the hardest section. We loved Calvin and Calvin loved us. We were like one big happy family. We decided that we needed to become organized. We elected officers and wrote bylaws. Jean Bowens was nominated and elected the very first president of the St. Paul's Episcopal Church Senior Choir. Jean and I always liked to party. Under his leadership, we had the first of the legendary choir parties. The first party was held at our home. When John Goodlett joined the senior choir, his home became the party house. A couple of years later, I was nominated and elected as the second president of the choir. Under Calvin's leadership and my presidency, we had our very first Easter cantata, and the choir had new robes. Calvin taught us many anthems. We have not sung it in years, but He Is My Joy was one of our signature songs. But the one that always makes me think of Calvin is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. In order to get the sound that he wanted at the beginning of the song, he painted a picture in our minds. Whenever we sing it, and it is a staple in the senior choir repertoire, I always visualize the picture in my mind. I always think of Calvin when we sing Taste and See. Calvin's stellar credentials did not go unnoticed by the powers that be in the diocese. He was invited to be the dean of one of the cathedral's convocations. Calvin brought us along. Finally, we were invited participants of the cathedral. We can thank Calvin, Calvin for that entree. Calvin was always so supportive and warm. He made himself available as choir master. Always included in family activities, he gave of himself unselfishly. Calvin shared his position as organist. He introduced us to Wesley O'Boyd, another talented musician. Wesley was the founder of the men's choir. He would always present the senior choir in the beautiful Christmas cantata. It was seamless the way Calvin and Wesley worked with us. Both were very professional and perfect gentlemen. Calvin was with us for about 27 years. We will always remember Dr. Grimes, choir master, accompanist, and friend, Calvin.
bright years. The next 10 years at St. Paul's saw an awakening of the spirit in both young and old under the leadership of the very Reverend Robert C. Wright beginning in July, 2002. Father Wright's energetic and real world preaching style brought in many new members and motivated former members to return to St. Paul's. Joining Father Wright on this journey and leading the music ministry as the choir master and organist was Trey Clay. Father Wright envisioned a choir of 100 and Trey set out to help make this a reality. Trey proved to be a high energy, talented and gifted organist, pianist, choir director, and vocalist. He was determined to take our choir to the next level, and he did just that. Trey's dedication and devotion to our choir's growth showed in the many hours he worked to help us prepare. He did things such as create rehearsal CDs for each voice part, which were so very helpful because many of our choir members were not trained musicians. He reminded us many times that we were not just another church choir. Trey had high expectations for himself and all members of the music ministry and inspired a high quality spiritual experience. He led the way for the expansion of the music genres offered during our Sunday services, which helped redefine the church experience at St. Paul's. Under Trey Clegg's direction, the choirs performed traditional Anglican hymns and anthems, gospel music, Negro spiritual, classical anthems, and handbill compositions. The St. Paul's choirs shared their music ministry throughout the diocese, nationally, and even internationally. The choir was invited to perform in a variety of locations and venues, such as the St. Philip's Cathedral, New York City, Barbados, and the Spoleto Music Festival in Charleston, South Carolina. During this time at St. Paul's, we were blessed with many talented voices and musicians, both members and guests. St. Paul's was also introduced to a number of talented music professionals during this time, such as Sharon Willis, Bernice Hall, Juliet Anderson, Pamela Dillard, Anne-Marie McVale, O.J. Harper, Chandra McKnight, T. Renee Crutcher, and Dr. Paula Grissom Broughton. We were blessed to have Trey Clegg lead our spirit-filled music ministry during this exciting time.
Muto, virtuoso pianist and organist, versatile soloist, gifted and talented choir director, kind, caring, and empathetic teacher. During his exciting tenure at our beloved St. Paul's, Will Buto brought renewed energy and enthusiasm to the music ministry. Through uplifting and inspiring renditions of traditional hymns, edifying anthems and spirituals, upbeat gospel selections, enhanced by organ prelude and postlude masterworks, the worship service was enhanced under his direction. Under the direction of this master technician, the choir demonstrated tonal and rhythmic precision, accuracy in dynamics, and impeccable blend, balance, and nuanced expression. We were blessed indeed by the spirit-filled songs of praise, reverence, and affirmation conducted by Maestro Buto. He was the consummate musician, faithful and devoted spiritual leader, and committed servant of our Lord God.
50 glorious years in the 140 year history of our beloved St. Paul's. Together, we have witnessed firsthand the musical journey that has taken us to the pinnacle in our history here at 306 Payton Road, beginning with Mrs. Iona G. Marvin. The narrative continues. We've come this far by faith. After reaching such great heights, from small to wall to wall, the best is yet to come. We have always been blessed. After the short but productive stint with the multi-talented Will Buto, the choir reorganized itself by putting together a choir retreat. As a result of the successful retreat, we were fortunate to bring the iconic Dr. Norma Raven into the fold. Dr. Raven is a fixture in the musical world of Atlanta. Her directing prowess is legendary. Multi-talented Dr. Raven immediately helped to uplift a disheartened, fledging group of choir members. With the expertise of a seasoned professional, the choir once again became hopeful and displayed the abilities St. Paul's are so accustomed to in the musical arena. Norma began with the Natives Choir. This former director of the famed Spelman College Glee Club worked diligently with the St. Paul's Ladies Choir. Every fourth Sunday, the congregation could expect a wonderful, pristine rendition of a beautiful spiritual anthem or classical piece sung to perfection. Dr. Raven was also a masterful handbell ringer and director. She rejuvenated the handbell choir. The handbell choir was initiated during the Trey Clegg's tenure. It too has been the recipient of many excellent teachers and directors. Trey, Bernice Hogan Hall, Rosalind Lewis, and Norma. The first set of handbells were given by Odie Mabry and her family. The second set of handbells were gifts from Norma to St. Paul's. In the interim, a search committee was formed to find an organist for St. Paul's. DeAndre Jones answered the call. A former member of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, DeAndre not only brought his talent at the keyboard, but a beautiful voice as well. He and Norma made a wonderful team leading the senior choir on the first Sunday mornings. DeAndre was a powerful force on the second Sunday mornings as he led the congregation in rousing gospel singing. The men enjoyed singing an array of selections on third Sunday morning led by DeAndre, and fourth Sunday was once again led by Norma with the latest choir and or handbells. Following the very talented Dr. Paula Grissom on fifth Sunday, Dr. Marion Stevens was the creative and gifted musical director of the Children and Youth Choir. Now we have come the full cycle. The Reverend Adrian J. Ford is the music minister choir master of the St. Paul's Episcopal Church Ministry. He comes fully equipped to continue the upward musical trajectory the choirs are traveling. Engaging, energetic music is experienced by the congregation consistently. God has blessed Adrian with a phenomenal ear and masterful keyboard skills. He offers all gospel, contemporary gospel with a jazz flavor, classical, you name it. The best is yet to come.
Good afternoon, St. Paul's family. I'm the Reverend Adrian J. Ford, the current director of music ministries here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, a vibrant and loving parish of the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta. I just want to take the time to tell you, thank you for all of your support and your prayers over the course of my tenure here. I'm excited to enter my second year with you. First, I am blessed to be able to follow in the path of some of Atlanta's superior musicians who have given their time, their talent, and resources to the building, development, and maintenance of the music ministries here at St. Paul's Church. I would also like to take this time to acknowledge our interim directors, assistant directors, organists, musicians, and conductors who have served this music ministry over the past 50 years here at 306 Peyton Road. We applaud and salute you for your commitment to excellence. We would like to also take this time to acknowledge the participants, the staff, and those who have contributed to the event during our 140th homecoming celebration. We thank you. Next, now that we have come to the end of the program, it is my hope that you have enjoyed the musical presentations that have been prepared for your viewing. As you have watched the various videos, it is my prayer that you have been reminded of the beautiful opportunities for worship and music that have been provided through the St. Paul's Parish community here in Atlanta, Georgia. We look forward to a bright future where God's love is shown through every land and spoken from every tongue. Finally, we will now have the very Reverend Timothy Black who is our current interim rector, give the benediction and dismissal, and then I will follow with the postlude. We thank you again. God bless. Good afternoon, St. Paul's. It has been a beautiful 140th anniversary celebration. I would like to thank our homecoming committee, which includes our history and archives, our uh, Lyceum committee, which is our music and our music ministry for such a beautiful evening of music. I mean, that really touched my heart and I'm sure it touched all of our, our hearts because it just shows who we are, what we believe in, in song. So happy anniversary and peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you for being with us today. In closing, I'd like to offer this benediction. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for our lives together. We give you thanks for the beauty and truth you have given us in this world and the means by which we can produce it for other people and embody it for other people. We give you thanks for these musicians and artists who have shared their gifts with us today. We give you thanks for the music committee at St. Paul's and for Adrian Ford, our music minister. Be with us all as we go our separate ways. Bless us, open our ears to hear your music playing in the world around us. In your almighty name we pray.